Hey everybody, I am Mad Max and I'm here with Tanish. We from the Audio Games Forum. We are going to do a, a, a Triple S interview. So yeah, this will be fun. I've decided to remove the visual element of this because it was making the videos take like 10 hours to upload. So um, <laughs> it's just audio. You can you can put it on in the background, do other things. Anyway, hi Tanish. Hi. Thanks for having me here. Hey, thanks for wanting to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just glad that uh, other people are interested in the idea. Yeah, I actually, you know, I never thought you were, you might say yes because I often think that I don't have much interesting things to tell. But you know, I I decide to take a chance here. I think a lot of people don't think their lives are interesting, and that's just not the case. I think yeah. that society uh, has gone out of its way to make like the, to, to to sensationalize these people's lives. And they make other people feel like their lives aren't interesting. It's like um, the body the body positivity movement or the body image movement where you're supposed to be thin, you're supposed to be buff, and all this crap. Yeah, Instagram just made it worse. Oh, what'd they do? Or you just mean the body positivity movement in general? Yeah. Ah. So anyway, I think that everybody has an interesting stories. Everybody has interesting lives. I mean, look at it this way. You're from India. I'm from America. Those are two completely different cultures. There have to be right. stories in there. <laughs> right. And some of, the, some of the experiences you will hear from me, you will never experience this in the U.S. Right? Exactly. You will never. So it gives us an interesting chance to observe different cultures from different you know from lenses of people who have actually lived in the culture even if you don't have eyes and don't have lenses lol so anyway yeah. um where where um where were you born in india so i was bo born in the central province um the hindi word is madhya pradesh which literally translates to central province huh. i was born in 1999 so you might say I'm last of the 90s people. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I used to have a math tutor who made a joke about this. Like, yeah, most of the kids are now from 2000. We are the old people now <laughs> from the 90s. Oh, I had a great, I had a great joke about millennials and Gen Yers, but it didn't quite work. It just kind of fell apart in my head. I hate when that happens. So, um, what's your, what's your visual condition? I mean, are you completely blind? Um... Yeah, I'm completely blind. Uh, my, my eyeballs were removed when I was one, one and a half years or two years old. No, oh, okay. So I guessed years. right. You don't, you don't have lenses. So there's no lens to see culture through. <laughs> well, yeah, no lenses at all. Because you see, um, I suffer from retina blastoma, which is a cancer which affects retina itself. So along with my eyes, my retina was removed. So there was no chance of transplant and anything like that. Yeah, that's understandable. Of, yeah, so a lot of people, when I meet them, they ask, can can we, you know, transplant new eyes to him or something like that? But I always have to explain that retina is gone. It's, it's not going to do anything. Yep. It's impossible. Do you have prosthetic or prosthetics? Uh, no, I am completely fine when it comes to my limbs. Uh, though, yeah, of course, uh, blind in itself is challenging enough. I don't think I would have managed to deal with uh, any other disability. Yeah, <laughs> I've noticed that a lot with um, the blind community is how terrified they are of being deaf and the deaf community, how terrified they are of being blind. And I'm kind of both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because look, for us uh, blind people, ears are basically substituting for the eyes. They're not perfect substitution, but they work for uh, they, we work for work with it all uh, as we can and once we reach old age or anywhere you know when we start to lose our hearing that kind of deprives us uh, another long range sen sense we have yep and the and the deaf people feel the same way about losing their vision because they rely on it so much yes it's an interesting so it's dichotomy because um when i went to the school for the blind uh, blind people and deaf people did not trust each other because they couldn't communicate with each other. It was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, the problem is like you can. Let's say you're you're a normal person, right? You can de communicate with a deaf person with, um, say, hand signs or you know, uh, any other way you can think of. Writing, texting, yeah. Right, but 
when it comes to blind people and deaf people there is this there is this barrier you they can't hear me i can't see what they're trying to say and this just uh, turns into a mess that's when that's, tech- why there is- <laughs> that's when technology has really come into its own texting and right, the like right. right texting is important because if it doesn't matter who is texting me I, as long as i can hear my screen reader uh, you know speak the text uh, it's fine uh, but uh, if we try to do that verbally uh, then, yeah. then things fall apart kind of falls on its ass yeah um yeah. so do they have um do they have blind schools in india or did you have to go through the public system so yes there are blind schools here but let's just say my experience is not good <laughs> yeah uh, so the problem is that they are horribly uh, i hope i'm not um, you know speaking this too soon but they are horribly corrupt seriously like you would you would uh, get donations uh, because you know a lot of people believe in donating whatever they can here so what happens here is that you would get food oil vegetables and things like that and the staff would take it home rather than use it for the school oh that sucks you get a lot of mpos yeah. over here that do the same thing they'll do, like they'll donate to some cancer cause and it turns out the cause is taking all the money and not giving any of it to research and stuff like that yeah. exactly you know i i literally saw this happening in front of me and there are other issues for example um let's say their education is way behind when it comes to compare if you compare to normal schools and you see i spent seven years in two blind schools and when i went to a normal school i realized how how behind i was uh, in in my um, in my eighth standard so you mean and like in, the- in terms of actual curriculum they were way behind in terms of teaching you like reading writing arithmetic and stuff like that exactly exactly so look the, and the thing is if, even if you count braille as reading or writing even even that uh, even there their uh, success rate was atrocious to say the least because in my uh, class of 13 students which is which some people might say very little but for a blind school is it is a lot but only four uh, kids know how to read or write and i was among them oh crap <laughs> and and the thing is that once you once uh, the other kids re- reached a certain age they were not interested in reading or learning to read or ha- write in braille so that's all that also compounded the problem even further it sounds like they just basically took the profits and turned it into a daycare yeah exactly and this is uh, um this is this is uh, this problem is also uh, kind of big because a lot of families they don't want to you know uh, deal with their uh, different kid they just want to pawn this pawn them up to someone else and forget about them yeah and then you get the parents who actually do yeah. care and who think they're yeah. sending their kids to a good school just to find out yeah this this happens with this happened with my parents so the the thing is a lot of people in, in india would say no 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 only village folk would do that david they would be the only one who you know n- n- not love their children but in reality even people in cities do that they would rather you know put them uh, in somewhere in the room where they cannot uh, meet with anyone else so and hide it like some dark secret on their family oh yeah that that was big here in the US until like the 60s 70s so yeah i'm well familiar yeah. with that history they called them sanitariums they'd put them in institutions if you were any kind of different like autistic or blind or deaf or anything like that they would just shunt you off into a into an institution yeah and it sucks so, that it's still happening so the over there yeah the schools yeah at least for the 12 years or so they serve that same purpose <clears throat> send send the kid there and then forget about it so how did you reintegrate into into like normal school like was it just a matter of catch up as quick as you can or so at least when it comes to interacting with other students i i didn't have much problem because my family never restricted me and i have various cousins with whom i regularly interacted so that experience helped out uh, and when it comes to school work um, i just had to catch up as much as i could did you end up graduating was, or what? yeah did did you end up gra- did you end up graduating um your high school or college or i don't know yeah, how to yeah yeah i i graduated high school in um, 2018 
and graduated my college graduated my college in uh, 2021 oh nice congratulations what degree did you get uh it's uh, bcom in computer application it's about uh, commerce and uh, applications of computer so they kind of merge these th- these things into two oh okay so so it uh, you might think it it's, it's actually boring but if uh, if you ask me it's actually kind of important nowadays because you know this e-commerce thing blowing uh, quite strongly nowadays so it was important that you learn to use technology for your business related needs oh yeah so i would say i would say it's an important degree but uh, only if you if you are taught well yeah and uh, and uh, well i mean it's a, it is a service that you can provide i mean this is this is you learning this new means of commerce that you can use to make yourself a living and help other people make better living too do you have a job from it exactly. yet exactly so this is exactly why uh, i'm coming to my job situation uh, give me a while <laughs> so this is this is exactly why i wanted to you know go into programming learn learn how to make software because this is where i felt i could you know contribute in my own uh, contribute my contribute to with my own strength and you know be in, relatively independent i don't have to you know someone hang over my shoulder or uh, accommodate me in some fashion for the most part thank god for technology in that regard because yeah. blind people have come yeah. a long way in like last 20 years just in terms of independence due to smartphones and like i say yeah, as i can't if, I, was, if I were to be born in 40s 50s or even 60s and 70s i probably would have just go, gone to some government job try, tried for that and become a bureaucrat who only deals in some special who only deals with some special cases and i probably would have ended up as a as a as an alcoholic as a result <laughs> yeah that one <laughs> alcoholism crosses like, all like, kinds like, of cultural lines <laughs> yeah so i'm glad you found it i'm glad you found a career path that you like though i mean so few people do i mean in any country you 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 it's mostly just do, use the job to buy the things that you enjoy you don't often get to be able to do the things you enjoy as a job right right but the thing is the biggest uh, um <clears throat> biggest thing you you have to do if you want if you want to get a job is to convince the other guy like Hey, yeah I, i can provide value i can provide value to you doesn't matter how how i look or how how i deal with my own personal problems that was what Usually, jesse was saying yeah, jesse yeah. was saying that it's all about being able to sell yourself to the employer and um what i was taught when i was when i did a job thing back when i was 16 was that you have to get in there you have to bring up the vision thing and just get out of the way look i know i'm blind this is how i do my job i do it better than anybody else yes the thing is if someone has closed their mind the no amount of conven- convincing is going to you know change their mind on the for other example, hand, on the other hand if you're good example, at reading people if you're good at reading people you can tell when they've closed their mind and just eat the interview right away <laughs> yeah so for example last year in november there was this incident um i uh, i didn't apply for a company but they reached me through the college uh there was this uh, I, uh, and a data entry job i didn't want i didn't want to do it but i thought maybe i could do it as a you know proof of concept to show someone some potential employer in the future that yes i have worked and i can work for you as well yeah everybody's got so, the uh, job experience thing so yeah so what happened was that when i revealed that i am blind uh, the hr on the other hand tried to give excuses like oh we actually you know we use internet for our work we use email <laughs> for our work we use computers for our, for our work even though i revealed her, to her that hey i know how to develop how to do web development i may not be perfect at it but i know how to how these things work better than you ever will <laughs> but no we, and the final excuse is hey we use english at our work what the <laughs> hell <laughs> man it's too bad you don't speak english <laughs> yeah <laughs> We have that we have that kind of thing over here too. It 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 is a real pain in the ass. There's um there's this thing called the Americans with Disabilities Act. You're not allowed to discriminate against somebody because of a disability. Cool in theory. In practice, they don't hire you because of the disability. They just say it's for something else, just like what they did with you. They just make excuses. Oh no, we're not looking for somebody right now. You're overqualified or you know any other number of excuses that I got. Yes, yes. Like the list of excuses is very long. And the thing is, I don't think I I have 
I have checked, but I don't remember any any such laws in India that you cannot discriminate based on you know disabilities and such. It it just but goes to show. It, it just goes to show that even, even if the law is on the books, it doesn't mean they'll follow it. Yes, and India has a lot of great laws, but they're never followed. Just just look at our politics, for example. That's you that's human nature, man. Yeah. That's human nature. Yeah. And the best way to the best way to to succeed in society is to understand how humans work and work to subvert that. In in this instance, you you sell yourself, and if you have to yeah. if you have to bullshit, if you have to if you have to um, exaggerate a little bit, I mean, it is what it is. My my yeah. point was I never lied. I would exaggerate, I would upsell, but I would never ever lie because lying will come back to bite you in the ass if you like yes. say you have a if you say you have a degree you, that you don't you, have or something. There is this uh, YouTuber named Joshua Fluke. Oh, I've heard of him. And, yeah, I I am a subscriber to him. He he really gives a great advice. Um, though he's kind of divisive in certain communities, <laughs> but I feel he's a great advice. He gives great advice, and he said the same thing about resumes that hey, don't worry about if you you say you 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 in you you mention in your resume that hey. I know how to use Django, but when you reveal in the interview that you need more experience with, that's fine. You didn't lie in your interview, but lying on the resume is not exactly lying. I I, I never even went that far, which is probably why I never got an interview. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was way too yeah. honest. Yeah. So in, in my case, uh, I so far, uh, you know, I can't exactly go to the companies and speak with them. So online job applications is the only way. But the thing is that sometimes, sometimes not all. The, I feel all the time, not sometimes, that I'm basically sending my resume to some black hole from which I'm never going to get any reply. Yeah, that's it. That is how that is how my experience has been. So that's far. how it was with me too, and that's how I've been feeling about my reviews lately. I've been sending out, you know, requests for codes too, and it might as well just be sending them to nobody. I hate that feeling so much. Even a no would be better than nothing. <laughs> yeah, and. Uh, so there was this um, I I don't know whether it's it was a man woman or something in between on LinkedIn mm -hmm. saying that hey some people are complaining 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 about AI filter in their job uh, applications so why don't you do the same optimize your resume with AI but I but I while I was reading that post I thought this is not a guarantee to success though. Well, nothing is a guarantee to success. Yeah, yeah. If it worked no, for I, everybody, everybody would be doing it. <laughs> or, oh, of course. You know, I actually asked ChatGPT, hey, can you res generate a resume for me? And it, it, and it replied, yes, just give me all the, the necessary info and I can do it for you. But, and you know, I'm going to take advantage of this because writing a resume by myself is a, you know, tedious task because I often need, I often need, you know, visual information for this like how is this formatted how is, how it is looking so that that is something i cannot do by myself so but why not take help of the computer yeah the tools are available you might as well use them of course i love how everybody's so, like oh ai is terrible skynet and etc and it's like no it's just a tool just like any anything else it's, it's very far from skynet trust me it's not it's, Ever, well i mean well, it's like guns. Everybody says guns are the root of all evil and all this stuff. It's like, yeah, without guns, though, how the hell are we supposed to hunt? And how are we supposed to defend our homes? And even even dangerous tools have their uses. And AI is far from a dangerous tool yet. Yes. <laughs> Give it another 50 years. Yeah. Maybe... Maybe if you want something like Skynet, maybe give it 100 years if we survive that long. <laughs> yeah, lately, <laughs> because, <laughs> you kind of wonder. <laughs> because judging from our current behavior, I, I have very little hope for our species. I don't think we're going to go out in 100 years. I, th I definitely think the landscape is going to be hugely changed in 100 years. My guess is like within 40 to 50 years, something big is going to pop off. And I'm not entirely sure what that means in terms of like, what? It just, it feels like something big is going to happen. And and it yeah. feels like COVID was going to be it, but then it kind of wasn't. <laughs> yeah, it, it kind of, you know, it, it just phased, uh, fizzed out. Yeah. How was COVID over in India? So, uh, what, what can I say? <laughs> On the 18th of March, I was, you know, uh, giving my second year's exam. It was accountant accountancy 
a boring subject. So, and just two days later, lockdown was announced. And Oof. then my exams were canceled. <laughs> and then what happened was that uh, at, the, at first lockdown was great. You know, it tamped down the infection and everything. But what accelerated the infection was that a lot of people were coming from outside of India. You know, Indians working out um, in foreign. Yeah, countries. yeah, yeah. They were coming back. So, yeah, they came back. And what happened was that a lot of them were infected and they never reported. They, they just hid like, you know, these, these are fl uh, fleeting prisoners who escaped from their prison. And they don't want, they don't want to be catched. If you ever want to see an, if you ever want to see an interesting um, kind of version of that, look up Stephen King's The Stand. Yeah, I will. Uh, because <laughs> my to my to read list is very long. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how it is for everybody. <laughs> yeah. So, what happened afterwards was that you know the uh, there are a lot of you know da daily wage labor laborers and such who are from different states working in other states. So when lockdown was announced, they were, they were, they did not find any work. So they they ran out of money and food and supplies. So they, they this there was this great migrate back to their villages and state. And then the entire blame blame for spreading COVID was put on them. Oh, of course. That these, yeah, these people spread uh, spread COVID. Not not the foreign people who came from foreign countries. These people were responsible. See, this is interesting because it's it's like the same basic thing happened to you that happened to us in terms of the misinformation, and we had to make an enemy to to hate on. But with you, it's it was a different kind of enemy. Yeah, Trump called it China virus for a reason, I think. <laughs> oh, I have no doubt. I I had COVID twice. I've never had a virus do what it did to me. I am positive it was man made, because yeah. natural viruses don't jerk around like this one did it's really hard to explain unless you've had it and you're really in tune with your body but this thing kept jumping to different parts of me and trying to mess with me to try to get to my lungs yeah. and um yeah. charles ugh. strauss uh, there is this author charles strauss yeah who wrote laundry files i did not review it on my blog unfortunately so he said on his blog that covid has turned humanity into walking wounded we are going to learn its effects 20, 10, 20, or 30 years later. Yep. And I, and I never got the, and, I, and I never got the vaccine because, well, for two reasons. One, I already had the disease. What do I care? And two, more importantly, every single vaccine I've ever gotten from the safe ones to the, to the you know, like the flu shot has messed with my body in some way. And I did not trust yeah. that vaccine not to give me a straight up heart attack. No, I got the, I my first shot basically reduced me to, you know, just sleeping all day long and trying to deal with this fever. Yeah. And that's what I I heard similar stories from other people who got the who got the shot. And I was like, no, I'm not going to risk that. I I survived COVID. I, I'm fine. I'll get it again and again. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I and, do not trust that virus or I do not trust that shot. <laughs> right. And, you know, the thing is, we are learning about its vaccines effects and how they lied about the manip manipulation of data. Not not all vaccines, but some of them. Well, it, it, I think something, it, it, something like that came out a few months ago. It boils down to guesswork. Everybody is guessing, and nobody is honest about the fact that they're guessing. Everybody is telling, like, all these people, like Anthony fucking Fauci, were talking about how they know that this is the case. They know that this vaccine will work. They know that COVID, 14 days for isolation, all, that, all the lies that they told... They didn't just say they were guessing. They didn't just say, we think this is what's going to happen. We might be wrong. And if they had yeah. done that, I think it would have I think it would have reduced a lot of the hysteria. But with the media companies being how they are, I'm assuming they're the same in India, there has to be a story. Otherwise, the media companies whoa, can't whoa, fu yeah, function. No so idea. You have no idea how bad media is. It is. <laughs> well, I know how bad the blind schools are. I can extrapolate from that. <laughs> no, they're worse than blind schools. <laughs> At least you can find some good people in there. Ah. For example, uh, my friend who, with whom I have been, with, uh, you know, my friendship is basically from 2010 and up to now. I found him in blind school. He's partially sighted. We met in the boarding school and we immediately hit off because we basically like the same shows. That's, that's the only reason. <laughs>
hey, sometimes that's all it takes. My, my, my roommate who treats me like a brother and I met on a porn forum of all places, so... <laughs> <laughs> we were just tooling. Just we were just no. We were just tooling around in the forums. We were talking about random, you know, because every forum has an off-topic section. We started talking right, about video right. games, and turns out we like the same video games. And now he treats right. me like a brother. So hey. <laughs> so uh, about that um, guessing thing, I think they took the lessons from CEOs. <laughs> <laughs> I think that you. Yep. You might have heard about job cuts and how they made the news, right? Yeah. So, the uh, Joshua Fluke again, I'm mentioning him. So, he basically made a great point which made, us, made a lot of sense to me. That these CEOs pretend that, hey, we can see far into the future because we are so smart. <laughs> then why didn't you see two or three years ahead and realize that, hey, you are over hiring. And you're going to pay for this in the future. Then why didn't you realize that then? See, that's been my whole thing about um, this short-term I mean, capitalism I mean, thing that has been I'm happening lately. Why would you? Why? Why should we trust you when you can't even, you know? Um, when you predict, can't even uh, predict the weather. Right. <laughs> you can't even predict how things are going to be in two, three years. Not five. Not ten. Just two, three years. They can't even predict how it's going to be in two to three days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Basically, this point made sense to me a lot that, you know, they, they, they screwed up and other people are paying the price for it. Yeah, it's never it's never them that has to pay the price for their screw ups. Right. And, so, and know, well, my my whole point about um, being able to predict things is the only the only thing you can predict are generalities. Generally, humans right? behave this way. Generally, the weather behaves this way. Generally, you know, so like I have ideas for long-term capitalistic gains we've talked about it in the gaming channel where you know right, the, right. the devs you know make their games more accessible they, they 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 um they market it out and um they get good pr and the good pr engenders goodwill and the goodwill will make you money hand over fist year after year as opposed to this short-term grab it all now capitalism that i really don't like and I say this as a capitalist. I'm I do not like this greedy bullshit that's been going on. It gives it gives capitalism a bad name. It's much better yeah, to it's much better to plant rage, seeds. Of, you you're hitting on this on the head. You know this <laughs> this rage you might observe in younger generation against capitalism. It's because of this exact same thing. Yeah, I because, mean the the old way they, that they, used to they, be they, was yeah. You recognize how short sighted it is. That's exactly what it is. It's short-sightedness. And so, um, it, it, if you want to make money, it should be done in a, in a stable, consistent way, rather than this immediate short-sighted now, now, now thing, because all it does is bite you in the ass or, uh, later. And it's the exact same thing with these politicians. They say all this stuff about how they can predict the future and how this is going to happen and this is going to happen, and it's as you said, all they're doing is hurting themselves down the line to make people feel better right now. And people need to stop thinking about right now and start thinking about the actual future of what you know what is actually going to happen. Because like the way my well, roommate I mean, is the the way my roommate's I, done it is um, he's we're gonna get a house eventually. We're gonna right. we're gonna move from this rental and we're gonna move into a house. What he's waiting right. for is he's waiting for the the eventual um, bubble bursting of the housing market, or I guess it would be the bubble inflating again. Because currently housing prices are way too damn expensive but eventually because of yes. how blackrock works and all this other crap that's way too boring to tell you about um eventually the housing prices are going to go down and when they do we will be primed and ready to buy a house that is you know within our means but we won't have to pay yeah, an arm and a leg for it yeah. and i mean nobody plans like that anymore everybody just like if, if we were the typical you know people these days we would just look at the housing market and pick a cheap one and it's like, no, you, you've got a plan for this thing. This is a big step. There's a lot of big steps that we need to take as a people, as, a, as, as the entire human race, that nobody is taking because they can't look that far ahead. They just have to choose right now. What's on, you know, what's on tap right now? And then, yeah, you know... And, go and ahead. The thing is, funny thing about um, real estate, as you men mentioned, um, I hear someone saying that due to the rise in remote work, a lot of the office space is, you know, just never going to be renewed. <laughs> I've heard about that. Yeah, 
eventually that bubble is going to burst and that bubble's been needing yes. to burst for a long time. Yes. And this is this is exactly why they're forcing people to go back to office. And you know <laughs> the, uh, <clears throat> Americans might provide better resistance but res resistance against this in India is virtually non-existent. It just okay. <laughs> because, because look India has a lot of people, therefore competition is a lot. Oh, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you, the threat of, hey, we will replace you. There are thousands of people waiting to get your position. Literally, that in your case. <laughs> true here. True here. It's, it's true here. It doesn't matter where, whether they are much crappier than you, but you will be replaced if you raise your voice. I've heard it's, that, it's like that in Japan, too. Any, any of those tightly packed countries like that. Yeah, but I think Japan Japan is still better than us in, in this regard. Yeah, they're they're a bit more they're a bit more spread out in terms of uh, where their people are. At least from what I've been told, India is very centralized. Yeah, and this uh, when when central centralized when cent when centralized power screws up and everyone then then everyone has to pay for that, like how it's going on in China. Yeah. I've always, um, I've always disliked the idea of a city life. I just don't think humans are meant to live in that kind of proximity to one another. I mean, just that close all the time with no, with no space. Oh, that would drive me insane. <laughs> yeah, no, places like Hong Kong is not for people like us. <laughs> because, you know, <clears throat> even my family realizes that I'm just not good, good with too many people around. I would just remain quiet and not speak at all. You wouldn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> because, because you know, when you are in the crowd, I just don't have any incentive to speak because already other people are, you know, wasting their energy. Yeah. Why, should I, why should I get involved in that? Yeah, and then also there's the whole, um, just that many conversations going on at once. It just confuses the hell out of me. Yes. So generally, I provide. Uh, generally, I avoid uh, crowded places. So if I ever en ended up becoming some great guy who's invited to universities, I probably am going to avoid that. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. Because because you know, it's not just um, the, the multiple conversations. It's about the noise as well. You you remember how I said uh, we blind people use ears their ears a lot. Yep. So. So loud noises is basically the same way to us, at least in my case, just like how you would, uh, just like how we would stare into sun. Yeah, that's exactly um, what it feels like too. When there, when there is a loud noise or a bunch of white noise or anything like that, it is like being in an overbright room. Exactly, and this is exactly why I avoid going to parties. I actually wrote an entire entire blog post on this. Why I don't go to parties. <laughs> They have to be very particular kinds of parties. They have to be those intimate right. parties where, where everybody is kind of... Yeah, there is no loud music. Yeah. There is no loud music. People are just going to meet each other, talk to th talk to each other, and then have some dinner and then leave. Yeah, when it, it's a central activity kind of thing. If there's a central activity, I'm okay because I can concentrate on the central activity and everybody's concentrating on that. So we're all kind of on the same page. But when there's like a bunch of different people doing a bunch of different things, there is no way anybody could keep that in their head. I don't know how people do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, no, I'm an I extrovert. <laughs> I went ninety percent of the Indian parties because the music is so loud here, and they just don't listen. They are so dance crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so have you um have you, uh, have you had any girlfriends or anything? No. Yeah, you'll and, get there. Uh, there is the, uh, so the thing is, uh, boys and girls do not associate here. From an early age. Oh right. The yeah. so, even if you go into mixed school, uh, the association doesn't happen much. So at least, so this actually gives a lot of boys anxiety when they speak to girls. How how do I speak to her? How do I talk? Yeah, because you've never had the experience. Yeah, but in my case, I don't feel any anxiety at all because I just I just treat them as I would anyone else. That's pretty much how I yeah. did it. Yeah. Yeah. So then. Funny thing happens happened in my school when I no, joined the normal school because my blind school was boys only. That when when 
once there was this girl who came to me and spoke to me and I I was quite frank with her like like I'm speaking to you right yeah. now and then my class was hey how did you speak to her so frankly <laughs> <laughs> with my and, mouth <laughs> and the, the same thing happened to my cousin who's basically a copy of me so he um he he, he told me multiple incidents of how he spoke to girls and many classmates of his his, his uh, telling him hey how did you speak to her how 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 did you how can you speak to her so casually and he was he replied why should why should i worry about it <laughs> plus the whole thing was stage fright if you're blind you can't get stage fright <laughs> He, Which isn't actually, true, by the way. It's just a joke. You, can, you, you totally you can. Because you can feel the eyes on you. And it's just the same as seeing yes. all the eyes on you. The thing is, when you go out on the stage, you are being observed by many people. And this this actually kind of, you know, brings out a, fly, a fight or flight response in us. I and fight. It doesn't matter whether... Yeah, fl- fight or flight. Yep, <laughs> I fight every time. <laughs> when, for <laughs> whatever <laughs> reason... <laughs> Yeah, response is fight and fight. <laughs> yep. The thing of it is, is every ever I've been stared at so often throughout my life, and I've seen mm. it and felt it. You know, because you, you you can feel the eyes on you. So whenever I'm up on stage and there's like 50 people looking at me, it's like, oh well, I'm in my element now. <laughs> it gives me a rush. Yeah. The thing is, I I think it um, it reduces gradually as you grow older. Yeah, you get used to it. Because when I was a kid, it used to bug the shit out of me, but. It wasn't stopping. It would just... People would keep staring, either because I'd have my cane or... Nowadays, it's because of my big old beard. People people do not expect somebody who looks like me, balding, bearded, and tattoos, to be disabled. They expect me to be on a Harley, punching the shit out of some other guy on a Harley. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, picking bar fights. <laughs> yeah, right? Exactly. That's the weird thing. I don't know how it is over there in India, but um, the the quote unquote dregs of society, the outcasts, some of them are the nicest people you'd ever want to meet. Because my mom was a biker when she was younger, before she got a job with the state, and um, so we had a lot of biker folks around, and they were always really friendly, really nice. Yeah. yeah so same thing is here. Um, I was I had a, uh, a cl- I had a classmate in my school days who. Who was actually a goon? Yeah, you can you could call him a goon, and he would take it as a compliment on his face. <laughs> but he never, you know, he never actually laid a hand on me ever. It's in fact, uh, you you know, when I was going with uh, the friend I mentioned earlier, the one I made in boarding school. Yeah, I was going to somewhere with him, and he stopped in his way and Hey, how are you? Do you know this guy? Why are you with him? And you know, uh, he, he basically was he was concerned that uh, I'm going with the right person or not, or where where I'm going about my safety and everything. Uh, and I assured him that hey, it's fine. It's he's my friend. I'm going to you know this place. I and found, then he left. I found that, um, and part of that is why I did this interview thing. I found that if you just more often than not, unless the other person is actually being malicious. If you treat somebody with respect and and dignity, they'll treat you with the same respect and dignity. And I feel like exactly. that's gone a lot, like over the over the last 10, 20 years. Like if somebody like <clears throat> if somebody tells me that they're, you know, super liberal, communist, socialist, I will treat them the exact same as if they told me they were some ethno statist or something like that. I just I don't see the point in treating people differently. For one thing, it's too much work to treat people differently. I don't have time for that shit. I'd rather just treat everyone the same. <laughs> exactly. So and the thing is I I think it 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 is because people are not patient enough nowadays. Yeah. They want inter- instant gratification. If you if you want proof of that, go to TikTok. Ugh. <laughs> don't even talk about that. I, I just I, I'm never going to support something like that. Look, I, I'm a great supporter of technology. And I believe it has a lot of values. But short videos? No, please. Now they Especially do the thing. Videos. I didn't even know they did this until somebody told me about it recently. Apparently, the big thing on TikTok now is to have a video up top and then have another video on the bottom of like somebody playing Minecraft or something so that they have something else to watch while they're watching this top video. And it's like... What in God's name are you doing to the psyche of America, or well, of the world, really? 
<laughs> fucking American centrism <laughs> or um, Americo centrism, whatever that word is. Yeah. <laughs> I hate that about our country. We're not the center of the world, damn it. I gotta get it through my head. <laughs> no, at least at least you acknowledge this. If 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 I ever brought this up to some American, I probably expect a lot of cursing and you know. It's per it's pervasive. How, how can you say that to me? <laughs> it's pervasive and it's all it's all the media. And part of it is just people don't care about what happens in other countries. It is what it is. You care about what's going on in your own backyard. But yeah. um and the thing is that Americans have exported their culture a lot. Mm. So that's that that also plays a part. That's true, yeah. But um and another reason is that uh, I'm just, you know, making a guess here that outside of something niche like uh, anime, <laughs> you you don't get a lot of media from other parts of the world. No, you really don't. Is, YouTube has helped so, en enormously with that. Exactly. So this is, again, uh, hel this also helps in, you know, understanding other cultures. If you watch their movies or their TV shows. Or you, you in this case, you listen to interviews by <laughs> from some guy in India. <laughs> Exactly. We're cultural exporters. That's what we're doing here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, and what exactly do you import in return? <laughs> <laughs> we're telling the world that Indian blind schools are corrupt as fuck and their media is even worse. <laughs> <laughs> we're exporting yeah, the we're, we're exporting those important values and those messages that need to be heard. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is I don't think any Indian is going to disagree with those points. And if they do, then you should you should run away from them. They're not worth dealing with. <laughs> it makes me wonder about the other cities and the other, you know, provinces and what have you. If it's if it's that bad everywhere in India or if it's just bad in the central city. No, no. the thing is if uh, if we talk about news strictly, then that national news which is televised to Say all over the India, it's national news, right? Yeah. So they are they are the worst, right? But if uh, because India is exa not exactly you know um, same everywhere, there are a lot of local channels like say I, I I'm born I I born I'm born and live in Hindi area, right? The, this entire area of um, where I where I'm born and. Um, Various uh, states. This is called Hindi Belt, yeah. uh, North India's North Indian area. So th uh, these states have their local channels, and then there are southern states like um, uh, you. You would have your uh, Kerala or Kerala. Kerala, it's it's Carolina. Called. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, then there is uh, Tamil Nadu. I I hear a lot of uh, Tamil work uh, in America. So uh, they have their own language, and they have their own channels, and they are actually better than national national news. That's how it is here too. A lot of the local stations, because um, we go, you know, some some stations are city, some stations are zip code, some stations are you know state, what have you. Um, the more local, it tends to be the better, just in terms of yeah. um, what they can it, what they can tell not, you. Not just in terms of presenting the news. But in terms of coverage of the issues. Yeah, the, the things that actually matter. Of, yeah, the thing is, uh, most of the national media in India is located in uh, uh, in Delhi. Yeah. The capital. So Yeah, and we, we get that up. We get that here. A lot of our stuff is uh, New York or L.A. And the rest of the country yeah. is not L.A. and New York. I can tell you that. Yeah. And this is where the problem begins. Because since they are located in Delhi, they do not cover other parts for example take my own state uh, if, uh, if the, uh, for example maharashtra is a state you don't have to concern much with it but it it gets it, it gets a lot of attention because it is an economic powerhouse but now compared to my state it's uh, more of an agriculture kind of uh, place so it doesn't receive much much much, uh, much attention. Yeah, yep, that's exactly the same as it is here. California gets the headlines. Kansas is the one that does all the work because Kansas is the agricultural. Well, Nebraska would be the agricultural state, but same difference. We've yeah. got fifty of the so, damn things. There's going to be a bit of overlap. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm glad I I never had to study in America because I probably would have never remember all the states. I'm kind of amazed I've managed to remember them over the years. Because because that. 
Look, I I was never good with memorizing dates, names, or places. No, I'm terrible about I it. Can, yeah. I can memorize, you know, uh, broad pictures, broad par- parts of something. But if you want me to regurgitate something word for word, then forget it. I'm not your guy. Yeah, I'm we're neither of us are good with the granular. It's probably because we can't see the grains. <laughs> <laughs> Blind jokes are inte- blind jokes are integral to the culture. I don't care what culture you come from. Every blind person makes blind jokes. Just like every deaf person makes deaf jokes. You have to. It is contractually obligated. The second you lose your eyes, you get 50 different dad jokes about blindness. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But, and, I, and I kind of get... it. it um, jokes are fine, but it is infuriating when other people are like, Oh, you shouldn't joke about it. Why shouldn't I joke about it? It's my body. I can do what I want with it. <laughs> Yes, who are you to tell me that? <laughs> the whole reason I started joking was just to make the um, the sighted people who got all uncomfortable about it feel at ease. It's like, look, if I tell a joke, they know that, you know, I've had it for a while, I'm okay with it, it's cool, it's just a thing. <laughs> so, uh, this, is another, uh, this brings me to another thing, that I have uh, not met a person like this in my life, but I have heard how some people want to change the language to suit blind people. Oh, God. I've heard that. I I I there I call myself a cripple. And right. I do that specifically because one time when I was in college, I was on a bus ride home and a fellow blind guy came up to me and got royally pissed at me for using the term cripple because he said it was offensive. I was denigrating myself. I was being pejorative to myself and I said, "Well, if I'm not using the word in a pejorative way, if I'm not using the world word to, you know, to to bring myself down, what's the harm in it?" It's the same way the black people use the N-word. Which I'm even, I'm a free speech guy. Even I'm not dumb enough to use that word. <laughs> like, I'll use it on my Discord. I don't care about using it on my Discord. But I'm not using it on fucking YouTube. That is how I get banned. No, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. In YouTube, we'll, we'll come to that uh, in a moment. So, what, what, I, uh, there is an ugly side to this, however, here. For example, um, if you call someone blind, then they're fine. Yeah, fine. No problem. But if you call someone the Hindi word for blind, then they, are, they get pissed off. Like, if you call someone Andha, they are going to get angry at you. Why? Why are you calling us? <laughs> I think it's a... Uh, it's an effect of colonize... Uh, colonize... Colonize India. The hmm. British left, left this... Like, hey, if you call, if you're called something in English, that's a compliment. But if you call something in native language... That's an insult. That is weird. That is wild. Because we don't have that here. That is com- that is a completely new concept to me. That is so interesting. You know, and this is this is uh, just uh, that the you know uh, easiest example I have seen. But this is quite prevalent in our society. Like if you, a lot of people are denigrated because they can't speak English, and in say 60s 70s or 80s uh, they used to you know put their head down and work meekly because oh, we we don't know how to speak english but nowadays uh, they have kind of regained their aggression and so what what i what if i don't speak in english i i speak some other language why can't you respect that <clears throat> man that is just so wild i'm just wrapping my head around that you know yeah, so the for this, uh, you just need to understand the colonial history of India. British came here. They wanted some English speakers to, you know, accommodate them. So they basically opened their schools here. And when people saw that, oh, these these people are the, these people are learning this language, they are getting successful. So it became a cultural thing to learn the language. Yes, then. and it has not been removed yet. And I doubt it, it will ever be removed because uh, you might argue that British may have left, but our politicians aren't any different. That's interesting because it's it's almost like English is kind of a virus to your culture. But as we know, you know, viruses can be good too. Yes, and it is good because it, uh, it allows cross-state communication. Yeah, it opens up, India, yeah. Yeah, India doesn't have one language here. We have multiple of those and not everyone can is willing to learn Hindi because they feel... You know, there, there is this issue between North and South India that North India wants to 
impose hindi on the every state and every person of the country and southern states uh, who who have a rich culture and rich history of their own they feel threatened that hey why are you threatening our threatening our language we are using english as a connecting language what's wrong with that yeah and i was going i was going to say english is kind of like the glue that holds it together otherwise you're going to yeah. get civil war of your own <laughs> <laughs> As an American, I can tell you, civil wars are not the answer. <laughs> yeah, no, they are not. If, if only our TV anchors would understand that. No, <laughs> well, I can't imagine how clusterfucked your government is. But then again, I mean, oh. look at our government, Christ. <laughs> let's let's not even go there. Yeah, that's I, a I, that's a dangerous uh, ground. <laughs> so, um, about YouTube, uh, you know. since the news is so bad on television here a lot of people look to youtube as an as an alternative oh yeah they do that but here too not, but it is not an alternative because youtube does not want news on it yeah they want you know you your usual content which appe- appeals to the lowest common denominator yeah they don't you, they want people they want Well, they want the lowest common denominator, but when they do show people who are presenting news, they want the bias. They want they want the stirring up. They want people to be stirred up. Yes, and divided. Yes. You you, you will not see, for example, uh, I hate this left and right concept, but Ugh. I'm going to use this as an example yeah. all the same. So, you will not see some uh youtube youtuber who made a video on particular issue say on the left side argue uh, and you will always he, uh, see that their comment section is basically the echo chamber of their opinion yeah i've noticed that if it, it either on the right or the left it doesn't really matter what side yeah. you're on because it's the same yes. basic thing and this is the great example here uh, do you know do you know about the graham hancock and his series Uh Netflix. no, I don't. So basically he uh, made a series about um how there was this great civilization about 10,000 years ago which disappeared and basically basically you might say uh, another version of what did they call Atlantic uh, Atlantis. Right, right, right. Right. So Netflix made uh, let him do this and he went around to various um what you might call ancient sites and basically procre- proclaim that hey archaeologists are lying to you they don't want to know this altern they don't want to study this alternative theory and they are trying to sh- shut me down and that reminds and- me that reminds me of the old history channel meme i'm not saying it was aliens but it was aliens <laughs> <laughs> yeah and and uh, some right wing channels Uh, basically agreed with him and their comment the comment section was the same that hey maybe he has a point what point how how are you how is he, his proofs are flimsy there was this yeah all he's saying is this thing might have happened and everyone's like yes it totally must have happened because you said it on a screen <laughs> <laughs> yes and all these people who you know basically got a degree in archaeology they studied hard they are all useless they are lying yeah And but at the same time there is a risk in in taking what somebody says seriously just because they have a degree. It's a, it's like for example um I can't even tell you how often doctors have been wrong about me in terms of like no, what my no, body I understand what, where you're coming from. It's fine to challenge some view. Yeah. But you have to challenge it with more than just flimsy, you know, bullshit like this guy's doing. Exactly. <clears throat> and and the thing is you have to have concrete proof for what you are saying like if this civilization was great more advanced than us then where where are their you know marks why haven't we found them where is their technology we have found you know stone weapons bone weapons other other tools which we used in our caveman era days you got to so have more than a maybe found. yeah so why haven't we found something left behind by them Where is their computer, for example? It's it, well, it's the whole flat earther thing. It's the flat yes. earther thing all over again. It's like, look, we have pictures from space that show that the earth is round. Give it up. 
We have yeah. pictures that prove it so. We have pictures that prove it so precisely that even blind people can see it. <laughs> yep. And the thing is, these are the same people who deny. At least I put them in the same group who deny the moon landing. Yeah. It's like I I believe in I believe in questioning things that happen. Like the whole you know China made COVID. I firmly believe that because I went through it. But <laughs> like. Come on, there's proof. There's a lot of proof that shows that, you know, we landed on the moon, the Earth is round. Yeah, not just the proof, you know. The frog. The, 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 the perfect I, example I, of that is Alex Jones. God, what a <laughs> lunatic he is. Yeah, so the thing is that a lot of technology came out of that entire project. Research papers, technology. You can fake this for so many years. Sooner or later, some thread would have been unraveled and the entire hoax would have collapsed. Yeah, I can't wait That's to see. I can't wait to see what historians say about this. I guess you'd call it a post culture that we seem to be in now. So I came up with a story for. I think it was a horror. I think it was going to be a horror one. I will write that in October. So um, basically, the premise is. Uh, that someone is reading a blog post. They are surrounded by short wo short videos watching zombies. Uh, the blog is it is it has a story within story kind of structure. Yeah. So the first thing there is basically some future guy who basically basically calls twenty first century as a second dark age because there is so much of conflicting information. So it's kind of hard to believe what is what happened there. I do love how they've taken the original Dark Ages, you know, the 1200s and like, and have rechristened them. Yes. So originally Dark Ages were, we, the, they were called like that because there, there is very little information about that time period. Not because they were in, not enlightened or lived like savages. We just legitimately didn't know. It was like going into a dark room, hence the name. Exactly. <clears throat> now, uh... The thing is that uh, this I I I laid down this uh, premise uh, because I feel this is how historians might see this time period they, because there's so much propaganda, so much view slinging, and what you what have you not. So uh, it is going to be difficult for them to sort everything. The age of blinding lights, as it were. That's <laughs> that too much light. <laughs> yeah. Too much light, too many lights, it's everywhere, there's no disseminating from all of it. <laughs> exactly. Good luck sorting so, through this, my, or, um, later day historians. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of the bad side when everybody thinks they're their own main character. You get so yeah. many stories. Too many stories. But then at the same time, we've got we've got yes. this thing going on. We got we got um we've got the interviews here. And it just goes to show that even people who don't think they're that important still have shit to say. I mean, look, we've been going for almost an hour. Yes. So you can't and you can't say that you're not interesting, that you don't have interesting ideas, because we just spent an hour proving yes. that yes, indeed, you Listen, do. You run out of time, just tell me, all right? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and great example, I would like to use this for the Gilgamesh uh, story. He, there was this Babylonian king who basically told some poet to write, hey, I'm awesome, write propaganda story about me. And he, this guy basically wrote this story on 12 um, or more, others didn't survive, uh, clay tablets, which we found later. And everyone likes this uh, story of uh, some heroic king who causes problem for gods and mortals alike. Yeah, the Epic, the epic of Gilgamesh. Yeah, it does not mean that Babylonia in Babylonia, no, other normal people didn't have their own struggles. They have their, they had their struggle, struggles. They had their problems, but they are not recorded in anywhere else. And that's why I think that this kind of thing is important. I think that normal people have good ideas. Normal people have interesting stories. Normal people, you know, we're just everybody has interesting things, but not everybody is a main character. Yes. And honestly, I think that's fine. I think there's too many damn main characters to begin with. I'm trying to keep track of all these fucking people. Ugh. <laughs> yes. And this is just, you know, uh, this is a problem why... I think this is why exactly writers don't put too many characters on 
on the story who who might be equal to main one yeah there is just main one character who who basically tells us the story through their point of view and that is what it is because there has to be some sanity yeah i think it's, i think it's also sanity. i think it's also spheres of influence i i i i really do believe that these these talks that i have with people will help increase our all of our spheres of influence to encapsulate more people so that we can I don't know, just be more compassionate to others. Yes. This shows that, you know, oh, he's, you know, we're not just surrounded by NPCs. We're surrounded by people who have their their own wants and desires and fears and, and, yes. and, and stories. And these, are yeah. who, 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 these are not the people to whom you can just run and collide and they will give you a side quest. Yeah, exactly. You can't, you can't just treat people like they're objects or machines. You have to treat people like they're... People, you know? and I can't believe this is a lesson I have to teach society, but apparently it's a lesson I have to teach society. Yes, and you would think that parents would do this to their children, but apparently they also need this lesson. Yeah, it's hard to teach a lesson so, you don't want, you don't know yourself. <laughs> so, speaking of sanity, I mentioned that uh, earlier. Writing actually keeps me a lot of keeps me sane because you know. Uh, getting rejected uh, by uh, by someone uh, to for a job you applied and you know um, not uh, not uh, someone is not replying to your uh, to your application or something like that this this takes a toll on a person oh god yeah so i write I, whenever i feel bad so this keeps deep keeps this keeps me sane because you know um, i I write book reviews on my blog to, you know, put down my thoughts about a book. I never give stars. Uh, no, I don't I, like I, I don't like rating things. When I do game reviews, yes. I don't rate them. I just I play them and I let people come to their own conclusions. Yes, exactly. This is exactly why I never give stars. Because you can't assign a number to some some feeling. You can't. Yeah, I, you can't grade sub subjective work. Yes. Some people are going to so, like it. Some people are going to hate it. All you can do is give people the information to let them decide for themselves. Yes. So I have this web serial also, uh, which I write, which again helps me in keeping my sanity. I will need links to your blog so that I can put it in the description so people who want to see it can see it. I definitely want to so, do that. Uh, I, I will give you the link uh, after this chat. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the, the point I was trying to make is that these different things writing these things actually keeps me sane because my situation exactly is not not uh, conducive to keeping sane thoughts in your head yeah it makes you well i mean eventually you start sending out so many things and you don't get anything back you begin to not feel like a person <laughs> yes and the thing is the reason why i actually started a blog is because i didn't want to do youtube and the reason because I didn't want to do YouTube is because I'm a control freak to some extent. I was going to say, you sound like um, you're also a workaholic like I am. <laughs> yeah, I am. We have to have our goals. We have to have our things yes. to do, our list of shit to do. No, for example, I'm, I'm writing my web serial, I'm writing my blog, I'm applying to jobs, and I'm also going through some online certifications. Nice. Because, so because because, you know... I wanted to do some computer science in my college, but I never took math in my school because they didn't want to do adjust to my needs. Yeah, that, that sounds that. familiar. <laughs> so, so, uh, so I had to take commerce. Now, commerce is not bad in itself, but if you are applying to a technical field, then uh, having a CS degree helps. I think. Yeah. At least, it, at least it helps you enough that you can get your foot in the door. Yeah, and then you can learn everything else you need there. Yes. So the thing was that since college didn't let me do that, I have to find some alternative means to do this. That's and another part where to... technology helps a lot. Yes, technology helps a lot. But... You can you can grab college books and all kinds of stuff if you know where to look. And I'm not yes. even talking about pirating. I'm just talking about like looking up PDFs and shit. You can just Google college yes. book PDF and it'll pop right up. 
And a lot of them are available for free. Oh, yeah. Not even free, It's legal. Oh, back when I was in college, that sucked. 120 bucks a pop for a book. Oh, it was terrible. A book I couldn't oh. even fucking read. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that pissed me off so much. Yeah. So, uh, the thing is that um, now I have to do uh, some online degrees, but they have their own issues. For example, um, since I'm talking about computer science, uh, uh, naturally you're going to deal with code, right? Yeah. So, but if you are attending a video lecture, then as a blind person, you're not getting much out of it because you can't see the code on the video. You can just hear the person talking about it, but you can't see the code. Yeah, they're talking about so, now copy down this code that's on the board. Where, what, what code, where, where, what? Math. You know, I I always liked math when I was a kid until my fourth standard because it, it didn't require memorization. And it basically told you, to, uh, told you the steps to solve a problem. And then you can apply to it. Any values you like. Yeah, there the only no... the only memorization for math is just memorizing, you know, how to solve the problems. Yes, but uh, my entire mind was diverted from this subject when, uh, in the name of teaching me math, the uh, older student, the board or students in the boarding school beat me up a lot for this. I was slapped so hard that uh, I um, temporarily lost the hearing my, in my left ear. Oh damn! They ruptured your eardrum. So, and these were all blind students too. I was and gonna say, wait, wait, wait. What what precipitated the ass kicking for learning math? Because I couldn't give the right answer. Oh, <laughs> that didn't explain why, why, where I was going wrong. You know, a computer is more understanding than them. When when I miss something in programming in the computer, hey, you missed something in this this line of code. Your code. It'll actually tell you, yeah, exactly, where you went wrong yes. so that you can and, fix it. Yes, and it, it will also tell you maybe potentially you might want to do this, that. It might not be the right thing, but at least it's trying. But in but humans uh, who are supposed to be more empathetic or, uh, you know, had real feelings, they didn't told me anything. They just beat me up and told me to solve the problem. I mean, at least, at least explain to me where I'm going wrong with this. You're going to end up getting a 2D waifu. You're going to get a body pillow that's made of Braille. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is, this is, this basically put me off the mat for the rest of my school days. Yeah. By so, the time I realized it, then, then I realized that, hey, I actually need this thing. I have to relearn it. <laughs> something happened, something similar happened to me with writing. My mom got me into writing really early. We used to do like back and forth chapters where, you know, I would do a chapter, she would do a chapter. It was, you know, writing fiction. And yeah. um, what happened with me is all of the teachers at my schools were so happy that I could write. They didn't look at what I was writing and I was looking for input. I was trying to improve because I'm always trying to improve. And I kept getting such glad handy bullshit of, oh, it's so great that you can write with your condition. It just completely <laughs> killed me. Just tell me. <laughs> what can yeah, I do? it just and I, I would go out of my way to write the cringiest, worst, most edgelordy stories ever, and they would always be just so happy. It's like, no, it's bad. Stop saying it's good. Tell me how to get better. And eventually I just gave up. <laughs> now I can yeah. still write, but I can't write you fiction got, anymore. You got, you got someone like me. Like right? <laughs> well, that was that, that's always been my problem with YouTube. That's why it's been a bunch of a stop and go for me is because I cannot get input on what I'm doing right and what I'm doing wrong. Now it's finally starting to happen. A couple of people will yeah. like my videos. A couple of people will comment and I'll finally get some fucking input on, you know, this volume is low. This volume is high. I need to adjust this. We need to do it more like that. And that's cool. That's what I've been wanting this whole fucking time and I can't get it. Frankly, I'd rather be beaten because at least that's quick and there as opposed to this constant... Knowing you're doing something wrong and not being able to figure it out. But that's just yes. my brain being weird. And the thing is that comments are actually important on your work. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm lucky enough to have some regular readers on my blog who co leave comments. But when it comes to my web serial, I have around what you might call 6,500 6, hits. Nice. On the site. Let's put this up. But... Only 15 comments, and most of them are my own replies to other people leaving comments. Yeah. And they don't point out any mistakes. They say, hey, thanks for the chapter. 
okay fine but any any improvement what did you like what did you didn't like yeah just tell me <laughs> i totally get that oh that would drive me nuts oh wait it does so, drive me nuts <laughs> and, and when someone comes in some i don't know maybe years later hey you 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 made a mistake there where were you when i needed you <laughs> oh the best part is um if you know how to market it right you can get 4chan to do your work for you you just post your link and you you post your links in such a way that you make it seem like you're making fun of it and they'll yeah. go on there and they'll comment on mass about you know oh you made this mistake you made that mistake i'm better than you and it's like yeah that's true but you're still telling me what mistakes i've made so that i can improve so yeah, jokes on you, you fuckers you're not, writing your own. you're not writing your own stories either <laughs> How do you even you how do you even write if you're blind? God, I fucking hate that so much. How do you X if you're blind? This question happens to me a lot, you know. Do they give you do they give you the most common one? The most common one is how do you how do you know when you're done wiping your ass? God, I'm so sick of that fucking question. Uh, no, I have not been given this one. Lucky. But mostly because maybe I do, uh, I don't visit those places. <laughs> Someone might ask well, no, yeah, yeah. Nobody asks that in public. It's always the one. It's always you see those on uh, comment sections. Yeah. But the so, most common one in public is just how do you navigate? How do you use computers? All that, and that's fine. I don't mind telling people that. But like for Christ's sake, don't ask stupid questions. Come on. Yeah. So <laughs> in, in once in a YouTube video, someone asked, "Hey, you're blind. How did you type this?" With and my I, hands. I basically, 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 what I did was that. Hey, there is this blog post I wrote. Go find out there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to repeat the entire thing. I'm trying to think of there was a joke that I did. Somebody asked me how I wrote or how I typed. And it was yeah. something along the lines of um with my fingers, like what I did with your sister or something like that. And oh god, that pissed them off so much. Yeah. After a while, you just start coming up with fucked up jokes to to ease the the boredom of answering the same questions the same way. Especially when you can tell it's from some bad actor who's trying to give you a gotcha moment. Yeah. <clears throat> and the same thing happened to me um, again on a YouTube video. It was about archery. And I used to have a lot of toy bows, swords. I pretend uh, I was a warrior as a kid. <laughs> who didn't? So, so, so what happened was that uh, I got good enough with it that I could, you know, uh, shot something just by its sound yeah Maybe i learned how to do that yeah but uh, i probably am out of uh, out of practice now but i was good enough to do that back then i mentioned this in the comment i mentioned about how i do, did this with sound i mentioned my blind and yet this guy hey how did you do that when you're blind, you're blind. <laughs> it's like but i just explained read, it read, read the comment read the comment i find it ironic how many sighted people can't use their eyes <laughs> yeah. yeah they they just want a tldr version yeah they want to um, feel they want to feel smarter than the room but yeah i learned how to i learned how to do that echolocation apparently there's a there's a there's some kind of brain trick that that partially sighted people have where um i can hit lob shots if i go like throw something underhanded i can hit anything anywhere as long as yeah. i can physically like yeah. get there but when it comes to like overhanded or straight throws, I'm completely screwed. And I've only got the one eye, so I can't see how far away things are. Like I can't see depth. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how the hell that happens. I, my guess is my brain just does math. <laughs> yeah. I wish it would let me in on the secret, but <laughs> that's just one of those weird yeah. brain phenomenons. Apparently if you have one eye, you, you will eventually learn how to throw really accurately a very specific sort of way. <laughs> yeah, but others are going to skip you. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Holy crap. We have broken an hour and almost a quarter. I'm very pleased with yeah. this. We got through a lot. Yeah. Um, uh, <clears throat> and again, um, you know, this is actually the first time I, I appeared on the podcast. Yep. And yeah, uh, more recently, um, leave us, leaving aside maybe once, uh, I am not on the interviews, uh, interviewee side, you know, I'm sitting on the other, other chair because most of the time I'm uh, taking interviews for my blog, uh, in text, I send them questions, they, re they reply back and we do back and forth and then I publish the thing. So it's, uh, you know, unique for me that, uh, Hey, how does, how, how, how do I feel from sitting here, you know, other side of the chair? 
<laughs> yeah. And, it, and it's all, but, there's also, it's also the medium. Um, yeah. It's a this different kind of medium. Is easier. You know, when you, when, when you have your entire concept around talking to people, then it is better to do something like, like a podcast than, you know, take text-based interviews. Well, I mean, they both have their, they both have their place, but I, I just, I prefer the, I prefer the informality of just shooting the shit. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, uh, writing interviews are good enough for what they do, but they have their limitations. And I have observed this in the last, um, what, 15 months or so. <clears throat> because it is very difficult to bring out the personality of the person, other, other, other person who are, with whom you are speaking. Yeah. And sarcasm doesn't uh, translate very well in text. Oh, I've learned that a few yeah. different times. Yes, it, 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 that, that is also a problem. When you, when you are a very sarcastic person by nature, text becomes your enemy. Yeah, and unlike, unlike say, fictional stories, you don't have, you know, uh, quotes and dialogue tags and, hey, he said that in that tone. He said that in this tone. Yep. <laughs> and... So this is a problem. Well, plus I think this will appeal to the blind community more in general, which I mean, it's not the active demo I'm going for. I'm just kind of going for anybody who wants to listen. But um, yeah, as opposed to yeah, having probably, as, as opposed to having no, Jaws or NVDA read it off, you've got, you know, just two people chilling. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I probably would have tried to do something like this. But again, I mentioned I'm a control freak. And the problem was that with YouTube, uh, there are other problems, uh, but the biggest problem for me was that I wanted to sh uh, short short a video, and I needed someone else's help to uh, in editing that. Yeah. And this this basically bound me to someone else's time. Like if, when it comes to writing, I can write in three in the morning, two in the night, whenever I like whenever I like, like whenever in the mood I'm in the mood. Yeah. But when, when you're beholden to, to other people, you're on their schedule. Yes, and. What if I had a um, what if I had an argument with this person? What then? Are they going to threaten me? Hey, I'm not going to edit your videos anymore. Then what I'm gonna do? Yeah, and this, that's this, that's largely why I've um, kind of stuck to how I have. For one thing, YouTube. I'm never gonna be famous enough for YouTube to give a shit about me, so I can pretty much say whatever I want. <laughs> yes, but then and you have an advantage about this, you know, because you can fly under the radar. Yeah, and then also the whole thing with other people is I have been burned by other people so many times that if I can't do it, I just don't worry about it. Like video editing, audio editing, I have no idea how to do any of that shit, so I just don't. <laughs> so the thing is, I have seen, you know, a lot of YouTubers who who started out small, then they grew big, and then suddenly found out, hey, we are actually, actually bound in many chains. What the hell? I don't and think I'm going to get chained down too hard just because my personality is such that there are so few people who even want to work with me. Yeah, the thing is that YouTube is a very restrictive system. Yeah, it really is. I hope you don't suffer for me saying this here. Ah. But the, the thing is that there was this guy who made a video about um, fantasy gaming apps. You know where the, you put real money up and make a fantasy team and Try to win the cash prizes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know about those. So basically, call them call them uh, betting apps, which are not betting apps. They, I suppose, those betting app companies got angry. They pull made him pull his videos down, and they made him censor every company's name he used. Every time he said betting, the word was censored. See the. The, and butchered his entire video just because oh, yeah. he criticized them. The the thing there is the mistake people make is they they're using YouTube to make money. Yeah. And there's Chip losing his shit. That's weird. My wife shouldn't be gone yet. He shouldn't be barking. <laughs> well. So how how is living with a pet? You tell me about that. To, um, how is living with what? Pet, pet, oh, a pet. um, ha living with Chip has been interesting. <laughs> he's a he, well, he's a pit bull, and um, he's an he's American pit bull terrier, which is the actual pit bull breed. Because the problem the problem we have here is 
Everybody hates pit bulls because they're aggressive. The problem is nobody knows what a pit bull actually is. A pit bull is an American mm -hmm. pit bull terrier. That's it. End of story. But they're they look a certain oh, way, not, and they're it, this species is not uh, aggressive. This they they have been used in the past for dog fighting, so they are okay. very they're genetically very dog aggressive. But you can train okay. it out of them if you get if you get them early enough and you get on them about it. And mm -hmm. that's what we did with Chip because you know we got him from we got him from a shelter. We didn't know he was a purebred American pit bull terrier, mm -hmm. and um, so we were just on top of him with training because the last thing we want is our pit bull being put down because he looks aggressive. So he yeah. would, he's naturally calm, and we reward him for being calm, and so that's not really an issue. The thing that he's done is he has gotten me outside. <laughs> because before him, I never went outside because, the, because my lungs hate the heat and my joints yeah. hate the cold. But he needs to go for walks. He needs to be exercised. He needs well, to be mentally... Excuse, you know, yes, exactly. And so ever since, you know, ever since we got him... Yeah, legitimate reasons to not go out. Yeah, but you know, people ask me when they meet me. Uh, sorry if I uh, if I sound like I'm making this about me. Nah, no, no, no. uh, that's the whole point of the so, fucking podcast. <laughs> so basically, what they say? Hey, you know how to use bite stick? Why don't you go out out uh, on your own? They never realize that. Hey, going out in the city when you're totally blind, no vision at all, a bite stick is not going to help you. No, it will identify you for a mark. <laughs> yes, but then that's not helping you. No, that's helping. Way. That's helping your robbers. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I'm not some judo champion either. Yeah, <laughs> so I defend myself. Yeah, the, I I saw the case that some robbers say, "Hey, this would be a great idea to rob this guy," and they find out, "Hey, he's a blind judo champion," and they regretted that immediately. Oh yeah, exactly. But um, insofar as um, insofar as having a pet, he's helped with my pain a lot. You know, hug the dog, get a little bit of dopamine, and then he's yeah. also lost me about a hundred pounds since um since we've been walking so damn much. So and that's, um, another, that's another advantage. Yep. If you if if you're stuck at home, and um you have a route you can walk, and I really do mean that you need a route you can walk for an for a an energetic dog. Um, mm -hmm. there are worse things than getting a dog. Eventually, we're gonna get a second one once we get a house with a yard. Because once we get a house with a yard, we can get to you know get the second dog, have him play outside, get videos, and have him be all cute and shit. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, if if you have get up, I think people should only get a pet when they have the time to take care of it. Yeah, you can just you can just you know collar the dog and expect it to remain you know healthy or uh, calm. Yeah, the cats. Of, they need to get out. If you, you know, bound. Uh, if you keep them tied up all the time and never take them out, they're going to get aggressive sooner you know, or later. Doesn't matter what their training is. Cats are better for working people. Dogs are better for people who actually have the time. And you're exactly right. They need physical. Well, even even lazy dogs need physical <laughs> exertion every now and then. And then they also need mental exertion. They need to be, you know, stimulated mentally. That's what the walks do too. He sniffs around. He plays with other dogs. There's all kinds of. It, it, it's that, very much a that one is a social, that is the social nature i think that is a that is, we are same we are the same way <coughs> shit <laughs> damn lungs oh. uh, are you okay but i heard a noise just check go and just open the door so if yeah. if chip needs to come in he can the the yeah. <laughs> the the uh, pound named him Chip because he's got a bunch of brown spots on him. And it's like, yeah, that works. Yeah. Considering how long so, it took him to answer to that name, we know for a fact that wasn't the name he was given when he was down in Texas when before we got him. So He probably had a different name then. Yep. Well, we know he was abused because he's got chain scars on him, but we got him when he was a year old. So it was plenty of time to, to teach him. Heal those traumatic memories. Exactly. And then when, a week after we got him, one of our neighbors threw a firecracker at him and traumatized him again. Oh, and if I'd caught that little bastard, I would have strangled him. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That little bastard's a sociopath. I'm serious. Ugh. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah, so, um, so do you, do you play games on your channel? Oh, uh, yes, I do. I've, um, I do descriptives for the blind. I'm doing Final Fantasy VI right now. I do streaming on my Twitch channel, and then I upload the raw videos here. And then I also do the reviews, and now I do this. I do four different things. 
No. And I walk yeah, him, and I exercise. God, I'm busy as hell. <laughs> I thought you were supposed to wind good. down when you get older. <laughs> that's, that's a good thing I see. You know. Well, yeah, we're both uh, workaholics. Because... We both have all, we both yeah. have like laundry lists of stuff we do in a day. Yeah, and I prefer it like that rather than you know just yeah. Using it all the time. When I was that, that, that when I was in me, and I'm and I'm not that kind of person either who just worked. 24 hours and seven days a week on my business. Nah, that's not that's just not me. I have many things that I call jobs that are job, that are not jobs. I'm not a Vince McMahon. <laughs> You're not a Vince McMahon. Nice. <laughs> that's a good reference. <laughs> so, completely yeah, random. Was... Completely random tangent. What did you think when they yeah. made uh, Jinder Mahal the WWF champion? Uh, uh, I thought it was. I I thought it was tokenism. I thought they were just trying to yeah, get into the market. Yeah, the thing is, he was not that a great. Much, he wasn't that uh, great of a wrestler. I think he wasn't even Indian. And he was. He was Canadian Indian. Yes, that's the whole point. You know, when when um, Kali was there, he was an actual Indian. He he got massive popular support. Like yeah, I'm but you want to talk about someone who can't wrestle? Holy shit! <laughs> yeah, but you know the thing is, I think. In the case, in case of Kali, uh, his his gigantism, gigantism, I can't pronounce. Giantism, it. yeah, I know what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, it, it it ruined him, I think. Well, yeah, I mean, any any of the any of it, anybody with acromegaly or whatever that condition is called, yeah, it's gonna completely ruin their body just because a body isn't meant to do that. <laughs> yeah, because he used to be quite fast and you know able to wrestle a lot uh, during uh, his early days. That because happened. The, the guy went to Japan. I mean, Japan is a tough wrestling. Con, uh, well, he ain't kidding there. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the thing is, and I argue that just because he was an authentic Indian, <laughs> I feel odd saying that. But so he has a um, uh, massive popularity still to this day. I argue that he's more popular than Hulk Hogan. I would say, like, if in, in in terms of Kali, since he can't wrestle, he should be an ambassador or you know some kind of some kind of um, PR role. So he's doing that right now. Oh, that's, that's where they that, they did end up putting him in that role. That's good because that's where that's uh, kind of where he belongs. Yeah, and he's also running his own company. Oh, nice. I know TNA yeah. did a did a thing in India like Rinka King yeah, or something it, like it that. Was, it was uh, it was basically called Rinka King or King of the Ring. It's, it is uh, translated in English, and I think I think it was a great storyline overall. Yeah, Marky Marky D one two three did a did a big video series on it, and he he really shone a light yeah, on it. So what happened was I think it was great. The crowd was great. The wrestling was. Maybe not great, but it was good enough. The wrestling was there. <laughs> yeah, and the commentary was top notch. Commentary was the great one. See, I have I have an issue with them with them kind of skimping out on the wrestling because, from what I heard, they actually got local guys who, while they couldn't maybe wrestle that well, it was still nice for the um, for the crowd to see local guys instead of just your Scott Steiners and the like, because yeah, it, it gives them a connection. Yeah, and their their storyline was great. Initially, they started out with uh, this, you know, oh, we are new company, we are starting a tournament, and then these, uh, then Jeff Jarrett shows up and stirs up all the feeling about, hey, I'm an American and I'm going to take over your promotion, and there is nothing you can do about it, and that stirred up the audience a lot. Well, I mean, and it's Jeff Jarrett; he takes over everything he's in, <laughs> <laughs> and and he he played the role of villain perfectly. See, yeah, I, and, that's and a big he, problem he, with wrestling these days. There are no real true heels anymore. Not even MJF anymore. Yeah. So, so, so you see, uh, th uh, there was this foreign guy who is making some Indian guy sweep his path as he walks to the ring. <laughs> this was a great human. I mean, can you imagine like something like that to you know, uh, stir up the hate from... The audience. Oh yeah, well I mean, I mean, you could do the same thing, and you could do the same thing in Texas. You you get a you get a Mexican worker to um to sweep the to sweep the ramp as you come down. That would get you huge heat yes. in, in Texas because of the Mexican population there. It's the same basic idea. Exactly. And it it works so well because again, India has a colonial past, and a lot of people are you know not happy about it. <laughs> That's what I love about wrestling is when they can tap into the psychology. I could give a shit about the wrestling. It's all just choreography. I'm in it for the psychology. Yeah. 
I'm in it for the suspension and of disbelief. My my only complaint is that they never brought up the season two. I don't know why they didn't do that. Because it, my I guess is the, my guess is just TNA I, was in the was in the squints in terms of uh, profits, so they just weren't making enough money to to justify it anymore. Yeah. Yeah, but because the thing is, if they are, it's if, if they were worried about the negative coverage, then I don't think they should have worried about it because again, wrestling is not exactly something is someone is some new news watcher is going to take seriously. Oh, I mean, they know what Christ is, so mm, it is not going to affect them. They know it's fixed. They just want their enjoyment. That is all. Yeah. If some news channel, if they, if some news channel wants to talk about, oh, how these people are not real wrestlers, then they would, they would, their response would be, so who d- didn't you learn this already? Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know a single wrestling fan who thinks it's real. Yeah. I mean, uh, there are parts where it's real, but you know, it, 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 and <laughs> if you want some real combative wrestling, then watch Japanese or watch UFC. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, UFC. You know, I want some alternative MMA promotion for me because, especially if if it comes to ring, I want some fight in the ring. I'm tired of cages. Yeah, <laughs> they they had some ring fighting for a while there. I can't remember what the one was called. Yeah, I think Pride uh, was the promotion. Yes, that's what it was. It was Pride, Pride FC. Yeah, and it got purchased by UFC, and then the ring was gone. Yep. <laughs> that's how it, that's how it goes. Yeah, and that was I an interesting that, tangent. You know, I didn't expect to get on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you know, whenever I think I'm thinking of workaholics, uh, Vince McMahon always, always comes into my mind. Now he's got a weird little yeah. mustache. Yeah, I don't want to end up like him. Yeah, he's kind of completely fucking nuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He was nuts in the '80s. He's nuts in the '20s. He's Completely I think he's nuts. Going to, he's going to die as a nut either, as well. He is. He he's going to die in the ring, or he's going to die around the ring. He's going to die in gorilla position. That's where he's going to die, because that's yeah. where he always, always, always is. Yeah, and um, he's so, going to die saying, "That's good shit, brother." <laughs> the funny thing is, uh, although of course there are, there were some issues, a lot of the older wrestlers who worked under his father. Uh, they never like him. Yeah, they never like him. I've I've never liked Vince McMahon. Yeah, just it, just from what he okay. did, just from what he did to the territories. Yeah. Oh boy, there's a yeah. there's a podcast that I'll listen to occasionally. You probably like this one. It's called The World According yeah. to Dutch Mantel, and yeah. it's like it's like the Jim Cornette pro, uh, podcasts. If Jim Cornette mm. actually was a sane human being, <laughs> I love Jimmy, but he's nuts. He's as nuts yeah. as Vince McMahon is in he his own gone, unique little way. He has gone in the deep end. He has gone in the deep end. The, th- the thing is, um, uh, a lot of people think that wrestling should be back in the uh, you know early days of what twenty nineteen hundreds or late nineteenth century. But I think that's not coming back anytime. No, I don't think it is either. I think I think I think wrestling that, needs yeah, wrestling needs to find a new place in the world. Because the old yeah. place is dead. The Attitude Era is dead. I'm glad it's gone. I'm, t- I'm tired of everyone talking about the, the halcyon yeah, days of yore. Calling it wrestling is a wrong thing, too, because there is not much grappling going on. Yeah. Remember back when wrestlers used to wrestle? <laughs> the thing but, is, um, if, if we um, uh, talk about finishers for a moment, I argue that if, um, let's say, there, there was this wrestler named Evan Lewis in the late 19th century. Yeah, and his finisher was uh, a gu- the guillotine choke hold. Yeah, the Karahajime. Yeah, that that's I think that's how it's pronounced. So uh, he was good with it. Good good with it because it was it is a legitimate hold. You will see in the UFC as well. Yeah, I like I like the finishers that actually look like they finish a match. <laughs> yeah, so uh, so he could do this uh, as you know, and sem- someone can sell this. Or he could actually, you know, actually uh, put the hold on someone who's not willing to cooperate. 
and make and them he, sell it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he he was a nasty piece of work. He br- basically broke the uh, leg of some guy just because no reason. My favorite wrestling moment is the the riot that Ox Baker started in the seventies. <laughs> Did you see that or hear about that? No, I I have not. So. Ox Baker was the heel. He, his move is the great heart punch or the great hurt punch. And he, he called it both things. And he's fighting okay. against Ernie Ladd. I think it's in Alabama or it might be in Kansas. One of the Midwest states, one of the Southern states, one of those. And right. he keeps hitting he keeps hitting Ernie Ladd with it. And Ernie Ladd is big baby face. And so he is yeah. like, because he's killed two guys with it. I mean, not really, but kind of. Like two people Don't have actually anything. died from it. So he uses it as a gimmick. And so he yeah. keeps hitting this guy, and Ernie's like, hey, you're going to want to stop pretty soon. You know, he's whispering in his ear while he's doing it. And um, Ox just keeps punching him. I can get a little more heat. I can get a little more heat. And eventually, just the crowd storms the ring, and he has to <laughs> run. Like, it is an actual riot. He actually instigated yeah. a riot. And if you Google it, um, there's a great video that where it goes over Jim Cornette going over it, and then it shows the the actual audio and video of the event itself, and it's fascinating. I love when people can get into the heads of the of the fans that much, and that and kind of thing them, make them it may, and basically may, make them what they want to do. Make them believe it's real. That's the yes. that's the best part of wrestling, and a part that is sorely missing these days. Um, yeah. I know I know Walter. Well, now he's called Gunther. Um, nah. he's good at making you believe that he's actually trying to hurt people because he just actually hurts people. <laughs> but it is part of the W. But he's part of the WWE machine now. Yeah, but I mean, I'm glad they've let him keep his personality. Because yeah. I mean, he he's had some fights against Sheamus, and they batter the shit out of each other, <laughs> like actual so, proper bruises and stuff. Yeah. So um, uh, another riot. Um, uh, and although this one does not have any footage, because again, this took place in the era of Evan Lewis. So this guy was in the New York, and he was having a match, and uh, his hold was banned. The the guillotine choke was banned. Yeah, right. So, but he still did it, and the riot started, and the mayor summoned the um, police officers, and they start try uh, try to hit him with a club. And he's still keep, uh, uh, you know, keeping the stranglehold on his opponent. And when finally one club flew over his head, then he realized, hey, maybe I should get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> that happens more than you'd think, especially in the territory days where um, they just, they yeah. don't, they don't, they yeah, aren't, the, they're too you know, stuck into it and they're not reading the crowd right. Yeah. My point was <laughs> with the finishers was that, a chokehold is relatively safe. It's not going to mess up your back or anything. It's not going to mess up your opponent. So well, that was why... And it is, it is, it is deadly. Like, you, people can believe it's deadly. So why not use finishers like that? Why do you always have to jump from everywhere? Yeah. Why do you have to do two flipping sentons on a fucking tombstone? Yeah. <laughs> even, even, let's say you, you don't, want, don't want a chokehold. Even other submissions can be dangerous. Like leg locks can be quite dangerous. I was gonna say, look at how look at how much Ric Flair milked the figure four, and then uh, Mick Foley went into the mandible claw because he was tired of hurting himself going off the apron. Which, hey, fair yes. enough. I don't blame him at all. <laughs> yeah. Work smart, and, not hard. And remember, remember, ankle lock is a legitimate hold. It's not exactly a wrestling big finisher kind of thing. Yeah. Well, it's I mean, a, I mean, if you wanna if you wanna stop someone dead in their tracks, a front face lock will do it. <laughs> I mean, yes. it's not flashy, but the damn thing works. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think uh, wrestlers are interested. I think I think their audience is not interested. I, we are, I think, as exceptions. Yeah, we're we are a dying breed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm probably I'm probably gonna live longer than you do. <laughs> oh no, I'm living to 120. I've made that very clear. Uh, not because I want to, but because I'm pretty sure I have to. I've survived being dead three times. I'm pretty sure I'm just not gonna die until I'm 120. Yeah, yeah. Let me know how the world is made then. <laughs> oh yeah, I'll still be doing this in some capacity. <laughs> yep. Anyway, we better get going. I've I've got a I've got to yeah. walk Chip here pretty. S- Jesus, yeah, I've really got to walk Chip pretty soon here. <laughs> yeah, I, I had fun chatting with oh, you. Oh, I had fun chatting maybe, with you too, man. Yeah. We we'll have to do this again maybe sometime. Wrote, maybe maybe next time when I wrote a detective based story, maybe then I will come again. Yeah. We can talk about it. How badly I wrote that one. <laughs> <laughs>
So anyway, I have been Mad Max. That has been Tanish. Was that right? Your name? Yeah, yeah. Right. Hey, I got it right. Thank God. I was so worried I would. I was so worried I'd forget it. And uh, <laughs> this has been episode you, three. You, you pronounce it better than my, you know, NVDA. It's call, it calls me Tanish. Yeah, that, that doesn't and surprise I, I my me. Spelling. Hey, I only pronounced it the way you told me to. <laughs> yeah. And I will have a link. I will have a link to Tanisha's um, blog so that you can check out his writing. I have been Man Bax. That has been Tanish. And we will see you all next time.